In the workshop, renovating an old boiler, part 8, completing the job. Previously, I showed how I mounted this hand pump on a piece of brass. Now it's time to dismantle it, because I need to paint the piece of brass. Initially, I polished this piece of brass so it looked good in the video, but now it's time to rough it up to key it for the paint. And in a similar manner, I'm doing the same with the copper water tank. Before painting any piece of metal, whether it be ferrous or non-ferrous, you need to prepare it thoroughly for painting. So after a good rub down, it's time to paint it. First of all, using etch primer. This is Phoenix Precision Paint Single Pack Etch Primer. It's really good stuff because it sticks very well to various metals. But it's terrible stuff to use when it comes to spraying it. And it doesn't matter how many times I shake the can, it still comes out of the can like this. But miraculously, before it dries, all these blobs of paint join up into one continuous coat. Before using etch primer, always read the instructions. And I don't just mean for health and safety reasons. The instructions with this etch primer say, don't apply it too thickly. You need to spray on a sufficient amount of etch primer, but you must be able to see the metal underneath the etch primer. The instructions also say not to overcoat until 24 hours has elapsed. As a semi-intelligent guess, I think the reason for this is probably to allow the acid in the etch primer to do its work. So 24 hours later, it's time for the top coat. And I'm using HMG Satin Black for the top coat. I really do like this paint. It actually smells more like enamel paint. It sprays beautifully and gives a good finish. Even the water tank is going to look okay once the paint dries. I'm applying just enough paint to get a continuous coat. I don't want any sags or runs, so I'm being very careful. Another 24 hours later and the paint is dry, so it's time to fit the components onto the baseboard. I'm fitting some pieces of silicone rubber tubing over the bolts that protrude from the bottom of the tank. In this clip, using a micrometer, I'm checking the dimensions, and then all I have to do is find a twist drill of the same size. This is a 7 seconds of an inch twist drill. This baseboard is covered in Formica, and initially I'm using this twist drill to enlarge the existing holes in the Formica, but physically I cannot get the drill into the right position on the second hole. I drill through the Formica only at a slight angle, then I use the smallest of my Proxon motor tools fitted with a pilot drill to drill all the way through. Then I just drilled through from the other side using the 7 seconds of an inch drill. And now the water tank just presses into place. I'm tapping it into place with a piece of wood and it's a very firm fitting. It's a good way to mount a water tank because if I need to clean it out I can just lift it off the baseboard. The hand pump mounting plate was secured to the baseboard by using a couple of countersunk wood screws but I did drill a pilot hole through the Formica first. And with the mounting base screwed to the baseboard, it's a simple job to bolt the hand pump in place. To finish the job, all I need to do is pipe the pump to the boiler and the water tank. This pipe is 5 seconds or 4 mm pipe, and I'm using this excellent, very small, microcosm pipe bender to bend it to shape. Then I silver soldered the union cones on, not forgetting to put the union nuts in place first, and here you see the finished job. It's a good idea to leave the union nuts slack until you get both ends of the pipe in position, then very slowly tighten each union nut. Because the copper was heated to a dull red heat for the silver soldering process, it's been annealed and therefore it's very soft. So tightening the union nuts pulls the pipe into the right position. I fitted the pump's outlet pipe to the clack in the same way. I need to touch in some minor blemishes on the pump. A few weeks ago, I bought some of these paint pens. Don't use them, they are rubbish. Instead, I decided to use one of these nail art brushes. Normally used for drawing on your fingernails, but perfect for this job. Once the paint's dried, it will look good because it's matte paint. In this clip, I'm using the nail art brush for just touching in the heads of the bolts that hold the casing together. And I'm using the same matte heat resistant paint, so when it dries, you won't notice that the parts have been touched in. I couldn't successfully spray inside the tank. So here I'm using a normal sized modeler's paintbrush and I'm painting the inside of the tank with some Humbrol matte black. So here it is, the finished job. It's a big improvement on the way it was when I first bought it and now it's completely asbestos free. I refitted the pipe to the water gauge blowdown valve and that's the job really completed.
and here is an AB comparison. Before, complete with the horrendous chimney and the asbestos inside it, and a ferocious gas burner that tripped my carbon monoxide alarm, this is the baffle that was inside the flu tube, and really caused the flame to blow back badly. And here it is now, with a much more sensible burner, the flu tube baffle's been removed, and it's altogether a lot better. And in case you're wondering, I quite like the vintage appearance of the mounting that holds the burner, so I left it as it was. That's it, and the job is complete. Thanks for watching this series, and I hope you found it useful.